Hafadan, hello. My name is Kelly Bloss and this is my channel, Dynabytes International. Today I'm presenting to you my full mango series. And this is in commemoration of reaching 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which was a great and such fulfilling milestone for me in this venture. Um, today I'll cover all of the mango recipes that I've made and I'm adding two more recipes, um, bonus recipes, and a couple of fun clips of what it's like to start a channel on your own with absolutely no experience and learning as you go. Um, I've definitely gotten better at speaking to the camera um, and just being able to speak in general because a lot of times I will get stuck on words or on phrases and it can just completely just mess up your, um, your filming. So, um, and then I'll have surprises like, you know, somebody coming home and walking in on, in the middle of my filming, or I will have um, one of my nephews, he is creeping in the background, trying to be quiet, but he's really just interested about what I'm doing, and so it's quite funny, my reaction. You know, when I first started filming, I was so like, I need to film when I'm by myself, I don't want anybody to judge me. Um, you know, and we're our own worst critics. I have come such a long way from May. And um, honestly, this pandemic has really brought me a long way. Um, to be honest, I actually lost work when the pandemic happened. I was staying at my parents' house and, um, you know, I had all of the tools that I needed to start and I had all the encouragement from my family. And I have to say it was pretty tough on them when I did. Um, you know, like I said, I had to be alone when I was filming, you know, I had to be quiet in the house. And so I would wait till they went to work or they were out of the house, like at the supermarket or something in order to film. Um, or I would film the cooking first and I wouldn't present at the same time because I just felt like I couldn't, you know? Um, but now I'm definitely more comfortable in cooking and filming at the same time. Um, I'm still working off of borrowed equipment or you know a hodgepodge of equipment, but I make it work, right? So this pandemic, when most of us can't travel, we're traveling through the internet. You know, we're visiting people's homes, we're learning about different foods and cultures and. You know, for me, I think that's what's been so great about this channel is that I can share, you know, my experiences and I can travel through the food that I'm making. Um, and then I can experiment and challenge myself to try new recipes. Um, you know, the pumpkin season's in, right? So I want to do a series on pumpkin. So, you know, maybe I'll do a pumpkin soup or some kind of, you know, pumpkin muffin, or, you know, I definitely want to share my family's homemade recipe for pumpkin pie, and we use fresh pumpkin. So, I'm definitely gonna be doing that. But right now, I'm gonna to present to you my mango series. Um, the two bonus videos are going to be a mango hickama salad, so I'm changing it up a bit and adding something healthy to the mix. And then the other was, I mentioned in my mango sorbet, um, recipe that you know you can create or eat it with a mango crepe or the manha tatitas which is a young um, young coconut crepe and I made it and my family absolutely adored it and for me when I was speaking about it I honestly hadn't made it before it was literally just an idea that popped up in my mind while I was filming and I thought to myself that's a great idea so I thought I would make it and try it for you guys. And it was fantastic. I was so impressed with myself, I have to say. And I couldn't have just one bite. I demolished the whole thing and so did everyone else. So definitely try that recipe. And like I said, I have some bloopers in there. I have um, a lot of funny faces that I made while filming and I'm sitting there while I'm editing these videos, cracking up at myself because I'm such a dork. Like, I mean, I knew I was a dork, but like that was taking it to a whole nother level. It's another uh, experience to actually see yourself doing it. So um, yeah, I had good fun making this video or editing this video. So I really hope you enjoy. 
If you haven't yet, I hope you subscribe to my channel, um, like and share it as well. I appreciate everybody who has helped me to get to this stage right now. I have had so much love and support from my friends and family from around the world who have been sharing my channel and sharing my recipes and trying them as well because I mean, I'm making these recipes and I want you guys to try it, I really do. So send me your photos. I wanna put that on my social media. I wanna show people that, you know, I'm not just making stuff up. This is good stuff, right? And it's pretty easy to make. So, I mean, little tweaks that we make. So for instance, my marinade, you know, it's obviously not in this video, but my marinade, for example, it's very similar to a lot of other people's marinades, but they were like spices in there that nobody would have thought to put in and they loved it. So, and I think that comes from my experience and the experience of my family that we get to have when we travel. We try different things and then we'll come home and we'll, you know, add this or add that, or we'll see somebody, you know, uh, somebody will, will try a new dish, for instance, and we'll pick up on certain flavors and we'll think, you know what, that would go really good with, with you know, with my marinade, for instance, or, you know, with the special dish that I make. And we really enjoy it. So we find a way to incorporate that into our family recipes. And we love to share that with people. You know, my parents um, love to have, you know, not dinner parties, but they love to have close friends over for dinner. So for me, you know, I have that um, experience of, you know, when you have people over and you're cooking for them. And just to see that joy, um, the appreciation of all the work that you put into the food to making it so that it's so great that they really enjoy it, you know, like in a way it's kind of sharing happiness a little bit. And I just love that feeling. Um, but I want you guys really just to try and enjoy the food and enjoy the experience. And it's why I try to make things as simple as possible. And it's also why um, I'm gonna be coming up with a series of tips and tricks, um, you know, on how to cook certain things, you know, how to, um, I'm gonna, like, like for instance, when I made my pie crust, I've had people reach out to me saying, you know, I was really struggling with my pie crust, but after watching your video, I really feel like I can make it again, or, or I can make a pie crust. So for me, that's, that is such a huge compliment. I mean, it really, really is. Like, I am super humbled by it. Um, so, tips and tricks are coming out soon. Um, they will be a kind of a hodge, not a hodgepodge, but they're gonna be clips from all my different videos because I usually try to keep my videos down to about, you know, under 15 minutes. Um, but then what ends up getting cut out of the video, what ends up getting cut out of the video are the tips and tricks because I end up talking more and more about, you know, how to make it easier or why I'm recommending people do something. Um, so I'm going to be making that video. Um, I'm going to be adding them at the end of each episode, especially if they're, they pertain particularly to that recipe. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be great. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I hope that really helps people because, you know, a lot of people get really intimidated in the kitchen. Like they want to cook a great meal, but they weren't necessarily taught how to you know cook in the kitchen or they you know their parents had them focus more on you know going to school and studying and, and not really focusing on you know other things so um yeah i had i know quite a few people um and friends um who you know their main job growing up was to just study get good grades you know get a good education um and even to play sports and then you know that was it, they didn't learn a lot of other stuff. Their parents took care of it, which is great. Um, but for me, like, I loved being in the kitchen with my family, um, with my parents, and then, you know, I had responsibilities as well because both my parents worked. Um, and it was just kind of, in our culture, it was our um, con contribution to the family, you know? We, ha we felt our own, um, we had our own obligations as well. So, um, so that's why I have this background, but not everybody does and I completely understand. So 
So that's why I want to make it easier for those who don't feel as comfortable in the kitchen to acquire these skills and to, you know, see that regular home cook can make dishes that are really, you know, full of flavor and kind of restaurant quality. I'm gonna be a, a little bit um, conceited and say that some of my dishes, I mean, they're up there. <laughs> Um, and I say that with both conceit and humility because I've had people tell me that, like, you know, I would rather come to your house and eat this dish because it's better at your house than in a restaurant. So um, I'm not just blowing smoke, you know, or I'm not just making my head get bigger than it actually is. Um, I have heard, I have had people tell me that. And so, um, I want you to have that experience. I want you to feel good in the kitchen and I want you and your family to have that experience of being able to have a dish that you can make at home or dishes that you can make at home that you know you can make it better than when you can find it anywhere else. I'm gonna be showcasing a number of mango dishes and today it's gonna to be mango bread and I hope you enjoy it. So since it's mango season, I prefer to have fresh mango, but you can use frozen and it has to be ripe though. Uh, sweet, tart, and ripe is perfect for mango bread. So in this video, because I have so much mango, I've doubled the recipe, but I've given you the measurements for a single recipe. So first I'm peeling the mango and then I'm gonna chop it up into nice, um, about half inch chunks, because we really want the mangoes to show through in the mango bread. Now that we've peeled and cut the mango, we're gonna measure the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna need two cups of all-purpose flour. When measuring out your flour, put it through a sifter. One and a half cups of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, Two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, one cup of golden raisins, three eggs, half a cup of vegetable oil, three quarter cup of walnuts, half a cup of unsalted butter, and three cups of ripe chopped mango. Now this part is the easy part, mixing your ingredients. You're gonna mix all your dry ingredients together and then all your wet ingredients. In a medium sized bowl, you're gonna add your eggs, your oil, your butter. Make sure that your butter has come to room temperature because we don't want to cook the eggs. We don't want scrambled eggs in our mango bread. Once all the dry ingredients are in a large mixing bowl, go ahead and give it a good stir to make sure that all of the spices and salt and sugar is mixed throughout. We're gonna leave the mango, the walnuts, and the raisins 
four lots to fold into the mixture that we make. And lastly, you're going to fold in your mango, your raisins, and your walnuts. So your batter is going to need to sit for 45 minutes. Just put a tea towel over it and put it to the side. Lastly, we need to butter and flour our pans to prevent the batter from sticking to the pans once it's done cooking. Now is a good time to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. bake, place your bread pans on a cookie sheet in the middle rack of your oven. Bake your mango bread for one hour. Once it's done baking, we're going to put it on a cooling rack for about 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes is up, we'll turn the baking pan over onto the rack so that the bread loaf comes out and then let it come to room temperature before storing it or eating. I really hope you enjoy this recipe. It is really simple and be careful, it's addictive. You can start eating it and before you know it, you've eaten a whole loaf. Thank you for joining me today. I really love this recipe, especially during mango season. If you're able to find fresh mangoes at the store, I would suggest buying a Philippine mango or it's also called a champagne mango if you can't get it fresh in your backyard. Today I'm making a mango and jicama salad. So I made my ser my mango series and there was a lot of sweet in it. So I wanted to offer something a little bit more savory and a little bit more on the healthier side. Really simple dish. You don't have to do a whole lot of cooking. You're really, really enjoyable. Nice, fresh um, flavor, especially it's still summertime for a lot of us. So, and for other people in the other part in the Southern hemisphere, it's a great way to bring in your summer spring and summer because I know you guys will be hitting mango season soon. Um, it's kind of a knockoff of the Thai pomelo salad. Um, I think mango is much easier to get your hands on and jicama is you can find at almost any supermarket. So I thought it was a really good um, substitute for pomelo and it was a great way to use mango. Um, It is, so jicama is, um, I think it's a radish, I'm not sure. Um, the texture is a little bit like a radish, but also a little bit like a apple or a um, Asian pear apple, I guess. Um, and the flavor is a tiny bit like an apple, but not as sweet, obviously, because it's a vegetable. But it's fresh and, um, and really just inviting to eat. You can eat that alone or by itself. So what I've done is I've chopped up all my vegetables. So will the mango, the fruit, jicama, um, some red onion, cilantro, and then I've squeezed some lime to make the Thai salad dressing. And the Thai salad dressing is a pretty, pretty simple, um, pretty simple dressing to make. It's literally lime juice, um, fish sauce, some palm sugar or light brown sugar, and Thai chilies. 
and we're gonna throw in some coriander or cilantro as well. Um, the mango that I got is a green mango, but it's still sweet. It still has a slight sweetness to it, so you're gonna get that savory sweetness of a salad. It's really quite good, so you're getting some tartness of the mango. It's gonna be a firm mango, um, and then you have, oh, and it's gonna have toasted coconut in it as well, and that's what just went off. So toasted coconut, it's unsweetened. You can get it flaked or shredded at the supermarket. Put that on some parchment paper, throw it in the oven at 425 degrees for a few minutes. Check it often to make sure that it doesn't burn because it will burn fast. To make the Thai salad dressing for this salad, what I did was I roasted the um, chili peppers, at least I tried to, um, before it burned off the stick. Um, but let that come to room temperature because you don't want to burn your hands when you're chopping up the peppers. But chop up the peppers really finely and then in a mixing bowl or in a um, measuring cup like I used here, Add your lime, chili peppers, fish sauce, and a little bit of light brown sugar or palm sugar if you have it, and mix it really well. cooking part of this whole salad is toasting the coconut. Um, again, unsweetened coconut in the oven at 425 degrees. I put it in there for three minutes and it came out perfectly brown. So I'm gonna let that come to room temperature um, before I put that in my salad. In the meantime, we have the jicama, the, um, we have the jicama, the mango and the red onion. I'm gonna throw in some coriander or cilantro, about one and a half tablespoons. And then we're gonna mix that all up together. Um, we're gonna mix that all up together with our dressing. Put the whole thing in there. And I don't recommend using your hands because we put some chili peppers in there, so use two spoons. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot of salad of dressing, but we just want it lightly dressed. We really want to be able to enjoy the flavors of the mango and the jicama together um, that is slightly enhanced by the, the fish sauce. Um, I, we might be adding some salt in a second. You know, the fish sauce does add some saltiness, but I think we may need to add a little bit more of our own. Make sure you mix that really well. You should have coriander kind of mixed through or cilantro kind of mixed through everything. It's funny because in the US we call it cilantro, I think as well as in, in Mexico, but in Europe and in a lot of other Asian countries, they call it coriander. Um, so for me, because I travel quite a lot, um, I tend to use coriander and forget when I'm in the US that it's cilantro, so sometimes people give me a funny look um, because people are used to, when they say coriander, they, it's a dried coriander um, seed that you buy at the supermarket in the spice aisle. Okay. Let's test the 
test it out. Mmm. I think that's a nice amount of heat. I think if I make it any hotter, I can definitely enjoy it, but other people might not be able to. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more lime and fish sauce in there. I think it's plenty sweet, but I want more lime and fish sauce for sure. So um, I put um, three tablespoons, no, four and a half tablespoons of lime juice in there. So I'm gonna add another tablespoon of lime and about a half a tablespoon of fish sauce. Maybe three quarters of a tablespoon of fish sauce. I definitely think it needs more. I would have at just added salt, but I need more of that Asian punch to it. The spices, that spice um, mixture. I'm just gonna mix that together really quickly before I toss it back in the salad. All right. I definitely think this needs to soak and rest for a little bit before eating it. So I would recommend if you have the time, let it sit for 20 minutes before serving it. Give it some time to soak up those juices and that dressing to really settle into the jicama um, and pickle everything else. So. It looks really great, definitely vibrant. When we add that toasted coconut, let's see. We get a piece of coconut piece of um, jicama and onion. Mm. Oh, that's good. You are going to love this. So that's a really quick kind of non-sweet, mostly non-sweet um, dish, mango dish. And it's really easy to make you know, no real cooking involved. You know, again, you're gonna be toasting some coconut, but in the oven, that doesn't take a whole lot of effort. I'm going to put the rest of that coconut in there, mix it through. Oh, I think this is gonna be a beautiful salad. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. quite a few more cities than that. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> to every continent except for look, every continent. I was born and raised on the island of Guam. Um, friends or some of the special guests is half a day and hello. Ah, this part, yeah. Half a day and hello, my name is Kelly and I want to welcome you to my vlog. My YouTube channel. Put on the counter. Bye. <laughs> okay, pause. Egg one fell. Pause. 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 <clears throat> I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to share the recipes and dishes that I've been making. I don't know if I want to say those things. Ooh, and my hair is getting frizzy outside. I bought the whole beans and um, I'm gonna put it through my grinder and then I will measure out my grinds, my grounds. Um, I'm gonna be showcasing. All right, now that we've, so now that we've, so mixing, so mixing this, mixing your ingredients, first you're gonna add all your, so that's really quick. Now you fold in your, now that you all top the rice. Papa Dan, hello. That is always the hardest part. So the sweet bite of that, so the sweet. <laughs> so no more, no more. 
you want, you'll want, you'll need to, you'll be using to rate, to rise the proof, proof the, cover it with the plastic wrap that you used um, to cover the bowl when you were letting it rise. Oh, why can't I say that? Using a pastry brush, you'll, you'll spread. Using the paper, using, Okay, I've just wasted one minute fixing my hair and looking at myself. Okie dokie. So, it's a very flaky, buttery pie dip crust. Once your pie crust, once you're finishing, once you're, once I was finished, once I was finished, the best mango for baking is going to be, ugh, after baking my mango pie, after baking my pie, what do you? And if you want a copy, oh, we're only gonna four, we're only gonna fry four fritters at a time, and then I put it into the hot oil. I only four, I only fried four fritters at a time. Then you're gonna want. Then I heated the pan. To make the mango filling for the turnovers. I don't know why that's really hard to say. So I, oh, my hair is crazy. I'm making mango fritters. This is a very straightforward and easy recipe to make. The great thing today is that making this recipe, I had a sous chef with me and is a very special person near and dear to my heart. However, because he's so small, um, I'm not showing his face, but you can see him work really hard. He was so curious to see what it was like to film a video for YouTube. And it was really exciting for him. Um, apparently I've got a lot of cool points because I have a channel on YouTube and that's kind of what he wants to do. But um, yeah, he was so cute and it's so helpful and really just soaking up the knowledge and of taking part and being a part of something new that we're doing. So um, so yeah, it was good fun to have. If you can't get it from the tree, then use a champagne or Philippine mango, which you can usually find at your supermarket. I prefer using this mango because it has less fibers in it and it's just better for cooking and baking. And this mango has a nice balance of sweet and tartness to it. Another reason I like this mango is because it really holds up when you're baking and cooking. So you're gonna see the mango in the recipe as it cooks. It's not gonna get lost in the other ingredients because it's mashed too much. So again, we'll need to peel and then cut our mangoes into half inch cubes. Cut the mango, feel the mango, be the mango. Cause you're a mango. Yeah, it's doing good. Doing really good here. <laughs> I don't need your cheerleading. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> You're funny. Now all we need to do is prep and measure our ingredients.
large mixing bowl. We're gonna add all of our dry ingredients and mix that together really well. size bowl we're going to add all of our wet ingredients and mix that really well. Then we'll add all of our wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and mix really well. Once your wet and dry ingredients are fully combined, that's when we'll fold in the mango. The goal is when we bite into the mango fritters, we're gonna see mango. Once the mango was folded in, that's when I started heating my oil for frying. I couldn't find my thermometer to measure the temperature of my frying oil, but I have a really cool trick that I learned a really long time ago from one of my aunts. To check if the oil is ready for frying, I use a chopstick. Can you see that chopstick? Okay. I use a chopstick, I put it in the oil to the bottom of the pan. If the oil begins to bubble around the bottom of the chopstick, that's when your oil is ready. We're only gonna fry four fritters at a time. To measure out the batter for frying, it's gonna be about a quarter cup. I used an ice cream scooper, so I filled that about three quarters full, and then I put it into the hot oil. I only fried four fritters at a time because when you add batter into the oil, it brings down the temperature. And if the temperature comes down too much, that's when you get a really oily, soggy donut or fritter. You're gonna cook your fritter on each side until it's brown. Not golden brown, until it's brown. You want it to have that dark color. The fritter should be cooked on each side for at least three minutes. To test if your fritter is done, remove one fritter first and stick that same chopstick into the center of it. If it comes out clean, it's ready, and so are the rest of them. Once the fritter's done frying, I like to transfer it into a metal colander so any excess oil drains to the bottom of the colander. I do that for about a minute and then I transfer it onto some paper towels to soak up any excess oils on the outside of the fritter. And then I sprinkle it with powdered sugar. Again, the powdered sugar is optional. All right, that's it. That's mango fritters. It's super easy, but it's a quick way to get donuts if you love donuts. And it's a great way to utilize mango. I don't know anyone who doesn't love donuts. So I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. Hey and hello, my name is Kelly Bloss and this is my channel, Dynabytes International. 
This is part two in my five part series of mango recipes. Today we're making mango pie. A mango pie is something that once you have it, you will crave all year round. Forget mango season. But this is the best time to have it. You can use store-bought crust, but as I've come to realize, made at home is the best, especially when it's a really good pie dough recipe. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I begin making my pie crust is cube my butter and then stick it in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. In the bowl of your food processor, add your flour, sugar, and kosher salt. Once you have your dry ingredients in the food processor, go ahead and pulse that a couple times to get it to mix really well. Then you're gonna grab your butter out of the freezer and add it directly to the flour and turn that on. Once I've achieved the sand-like consistency, I turned off my food processor and grabbed my tablespoon to add water. Once I was ready to add the water, I turned my food processor back on and slowly added three tablespoons of ice cold water. It started with three tablespoons, but you may need more. But once you reach three tablespoons, you're going to add the next tablespoon very slowly. And what we're trying to aim for is that ball of dough to just come together, not completely form a ball, just come together. It will still have some like sand-like remnants around it, but once most of it forms and so that comes together, stop processing and stop adding water. Once my pie crust came together, I turned the dough out onto a parchment paper to help me form the dough. The dough does need to be worked a little bit just because it needs to come together until it's kind of a solid, um, one solid piece. What we want to avoid when making this pie crust is having it stick to the surface that you're working on or sticking to your hands or warming the butter too much because we want to have a flaky buttery crust in the end. And if we work the dough too much, we're gonna get a rubbery consistency and that's not what we're aiming for. So pay attention to what you're doing. If you can, use a pie mat or a parchment paper to kind of fold and work your dough until it really forms one solid piece. And once you get to that consistency, go ahead and wrap that in plastic wrap and put it in your refrigerator for one hour. After being in the refrigerator for an hour, the dough will probably need to sit for about 15 minutes on the counter space before you start working the dough. It will become really hard, so if you try to roll out your dough right out of the refrigerator, you're probably gonna get a lot of cracking. But if it does crack, it's not a big deal. You can easily pinch it together as you can see me doing. If you don't have a pie measuring mat like me, keep your pie mold nearby. As you're rolling out the dough, you wanna use your pie mold to measure how much you're rolling out. You'll need an inch around the edge of your pie mold to ensure that you have the right size dough. Once I reach the desired size for my pie crust, we wanna preserve the quality of the pie crust, so use your rolling pin to transfer the dough. Once you get the dough over the pie mold, don't stretch the dough. You'll wanna lift the side of it and then tuck it into the edge until you get rid of all the pockets all around the edge, pushing the, not stretching, but pushing the pie mold up against the edges. And you're gonna need to adjust the pie crust with your both hands so that it fits perfectly. Once your pie crust is fitted in the pie mold, you'll wanna use some scissors to cut off the edges. You can leave your pie crust as it is with a flat edge. That looks really nice and neat, very modern. But I wanted to get a little fancy and make mine kind of look like a flower, so I used that three, three finger pinch um, on the pie crust edge. And it really turned out pretty. Before putting your pie crust in the freezer, poke holes on the bottom of the pie crust. This will help to prevent any air pockets from forming while pre-baking the pie crust. Once I was finished forming my pie crust in the pie mold, I put it in the freezer for 30 minutes. Once I put my pie crust in the freezer, I began working on my mango filling. 
this pie has two fillings. It has a mango layer and a cheesecake layer. So the mango layer, I began cutting and peeling my mango into half inch cubes. The best mangoes for these recipes are gonna be a champagne mango or a Philippine mango. They're really nice, sweet, and tart, and they don't have a lot of fibers in it. So it's really great for baking. To assemble the mango filling, all you do is add all of the ingredients into one bowl and mix it really well, and then place it on the side until we're ready to use it. To make the cheesecake filling, first I whipped my cream cheese until it was really smooth. After whipping my cream cheese, then I add my sugar. Next, I added my vanilla paste. Once my cream cheese sugar and vanilla paste were well mixed, I added my eggs. Making sure to combine all my ingredients really well, I want a very smooth and silky consistency. I covered the pie crust with the parchment paper and then I added the pie weights. And you do have to shift the parchment paper around a little bit just so that you get the pie weights all up against the sides of the pie crust. Then we're gonna pre-bake our pie crust. We'll put it in the oven at 425 degrees with the pie weights inside of it. Egg and the heavy cream will be used as a glaze to put over the pie crust so that we get a nice shiny golden crust. Once you remove your pie crust from the oven, remove the weights. Then I brushed down my pie crust with the glaze I made from the egg and heavy cream. This glaze will create a protective layer between the crust and the filling, preventing the crust from becoming soggy. It will also allow the crust to have a nice golden shiny hue. Because this pie will be cooking for a long time, I needed to create some kind of protective ring for the edges of the pie crust so that it didn't burn and get bitter. So I used a really long piece of foil. I measured it against the side of the pie mold and then I combined the two edges together forming a ring and crumpled it all the way around so that it would stick. Now this particular ring of foil, I actually keep and use over and over again. Attach it really well and kind of fold it without touching the foil to the sides of the crust. 
we're going to cover it and protect the edges of the pie crust. Once you bake the pie crust for another 15 minutes, remove the pie crust from the oven. Reduce your oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and add your mango filling to the pie crust. And bake your pie with the mango filling for another 15 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I gently ladled my cheesecake filling on top of the mango layer taking care not to mix the two layers. Then I put the pie back in the oven for another 35 to 40 minutes at 375 degrees until the cheesecake settled and the top layer achieved a light brown color. Once your pie is done baking, put it on a cooling rack and let it come to room temperature. Once the pie comes to room temperature, then put it in your refrigerator for two to four hours even better overnight. You really want your layers to solidify um, before eating it. So this pie is actually made best the night before serving. Before serving, I spread a quarter cup of sour cream over the top of the pie and then sprinkled it lightly with ground nutmeg. Slice and serve. This really is a special pie and so much enjoyable. I really hope that you like it. If you make it, please comment. And if even better, if you film it and tag me in it, I would love to see the outcome um, and just how much you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe because this is actually one of my all time favorite dessert recipes. It always hits the spot, it always feels like home. It always makes me feel like I'm on the island, just kind of relaxing, enjoying the day. If you enjoyed this recipe, I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. And if you want the recipe, I've included the link in the description below. My name is Kelly Bloss and this is my channel, Dynabytes International. So this is part four of my five part series of mango recipes, my favorite mango recipes. And today I'm gonna to be making mango sorbet. It is so easy to make this and it's so delightful. Everyone will love it. It's refreshing, it's sweet and tart and just cools you down on a really hot day. And because it's summer, this is the perfect dessert for summer, the perfect sweet treat for all the family. So I really hope you enjoy this. It is such an easy recipe. There's literally six ingredients. And I know that seems like a lot, but most of these you probably have in your house, except for maybe the mango and the coconut milk. Those are the two things you're probably gonna have to go to the store for. But you'll need um, whole mango, fresh ripe mango, sugar, a little bit of kosher salt, coconut milk in the can is fine. Um, if you can get fresh, amazing, get it fresh. We'll need the zest from the lemon and the lemon juice and vanilla bean extract or vanilla bean paste, which is what I prefer. So you peel and you cut the mango. As I've said in the last few episodes, my two favorite mangoes for baking, beside the ones from my parents' trees, um, are gonna be the champagne mango or the Philippine mango, which is also called the Carabao mango. These mangoes have fewer fibers in them and they're also um, sweet and tart. They have a good balance. So they really hold up when cooking. So that's why I really, really, really love these mangoes. So essentially what we're gonna do is if you have an ice cream maker, that's great. Um, or the ice cream attachment for the KitchenAid mixer, that's gonna be great, it's great help. We're essentially just gonna throw everything in the blender, blend it up, and then put it in the freezer. We'll put all the ingredients except for one cup of mango in the blender, because we want to preserve those to add chunks of mango in the sorbet, so you're biting into just to chunks, so it's really nice. And so what I did was I just put everything in the blender, except for that one cup of mango, and just blend it up really fine, pureed it. 
and then I put it in my ice cream maker or the attachment, um, the ice cream attachment for the KitchenAid mixer. I froze that overnight. Um, it should freeze for about 15 hours or what the instructions say. Um, and you don't take it out of the freezer until you use it. Once the mixture goes uh, through the process, you put it in the ice cream maker or ice cream attachment for 20 minutes and have that go on a low speed to turn it because the more, the faster it goes, actually the more heat you're creating, so you're not allowing that to set up. After 20 minutes, you should have a soft serve like consistency. Um, you can put it in the freezer for about two to four hours just to have it set up even more um, if you want more of a ice cream or a firmer consistency, just do that and then you should be able to serve. Scoop it up and put some mint on it and serve it as is or you can put it in a crate and add some toppings and everyone will enjoy. Because this is not cream based, this is a sorbet, it can start to really firm up or ice up a little bit. What I like to do is I'll actually put it in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds and then I'll also put my ice cream scooper in some hot water so that when I scoop it, it kind of just cuts right through everything. You'll really get that nice round scoop. So let's try it out. Enjoy! Like I said, it's perfect for a hot day when you're out on the when you've had to be out on the beach and you come home or even from working in the yard. This is such a great treat. It's sweet, it's tart, it's ice cold, and it just kind of brings down your temperature and lightens up your spirit. And it's super easy to make. So I know that your family will love this. And I hope you do too. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this recipe, you can find the link in the description below. And I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Cheers. Okay, keep on, <laughs> just go. Your tablet was on one of the chairs before, I think. It wasn't up here. No, your tablet, the green one. I don't know why you're whispering. <laughs> just go to the room. <laughs> okay. Just give me 10 minutes. Please. I know, but I can hear you moving. I can see you. You're distracting. Jeez, 10 minutes and I'll be done. Yes, go to your room. Be quiet. Okay. So this recipe is really easy to make. And then I think the next one up is a number two. And I used the number two. Um, so, and I used, <laughs> I don't want to say I used the number two. So once you, just go. So rude. A cookie, no. And put it on a cooling rack and allow that to come to room temperature. Everybody <sighs> and hello, my name is Kelly Bloss and this is my channel, Dynabytes International. 
and this is part five in my five part series of mango recipes, my favorite mango recipes. And today I'm making mango turnovers. Um, it really is, I think it's pretty simple, but some might say it was probably a medium level skilled um, dessert, but hey, we could all learn at some point, right? The crust is super simple. We've made it before. It's my pie crust with a little bit more sugar and a new ingredient, ground cinnamon. For me, it's easiest to make it in a food processor. So if you have a food processor, then you've already gotten to that mid-level. It takes away all the work. Um, when you're making a pie crust, the most important thing to do is keep the butter as cold as possible because the, and, and work it the least amount as possible because the more you work the dough, the tougher it gets um, and, the, and then you warm the butter and it actually becomes more of a cracker and rubbery texture than it would a flaky and buttery texture. So the crust, again, if you have a food processor, that's great. If not, it's a little bit more work. Um, and to be honest with you, there are lots of people on YouTube who make pie crusts by hand. Check them out. The pie crust recipe that we're using will actually make four turnovers. So um, before we put the pie crust into the refrigerator for an hour to um, bring it back up to temperature, back up to the temperature that I want, um, I actually cut it into four sections as equally as possible. I mean, you could be really technical and weigh it if you wanted to. I haven't done that yet. I kind of just eyeball it. Um, and maybe one comes out a little bit bigger than the other, but you kind of just play with it. Um, so, and what we also want to do before we wrap it in plastic is we want to form them into um, kind of hockey puck sized um, discs and then wrap it in plastic wrap and put that in the refrigerator. This is gonna help us, this is gonna make it easier for us to roll out the dough um, that we're gonna be using to make the turnover. The filling for the mango turnover is really pretty much the same filling that goes into the mango pie, but this time we're adding lemon zest and lemon juice. Put it in a saucepan, add all of your ingredients, mix it really well. and then turn on your heat and let it just come to a boil. Um, and just when it comes to a boil, then lower it down to a simmer. Well, the reason why we're trying to keep it on there as long as possible is because the minute tapioca needs to soften. Um, and that's why we added also, it's one to two tablespoons of water. That one to two tablespoons of water will help the tapioca to cook and become softer, but also soak up the juices so that you're not having a watery consistency of the filling inside the turnover and it won't make your crust soggy. After you're done cooking your filling, you'll see it really thick enough. Um, and that's what we're looking for. We want it to be thick um, because again, we don't want it to spill out once it's, once it's baked. We don't want it to make the crust soggy. So this is really what we're looking for. Now, we, want the, we need the filling to come to room temperature so that when we're ready to form the turnovers, you know, we're not softening the crust or the butter in the crust and then we're not, you know, again, making it soggy or anything like that.
After the crust has been in the refrigerator for an hour, take it out and put it on your counter, your countertop for about five to eight minutes. It needs to soften a little bit before it's pliable enough to roll out. You want the pie crust to be formed into a six inch diameter circle as close as possible. If you want it perfect, you can get a bowl from your kitchen and if it's about six inches in diameter, use that to cut it, cut the, the edges of the pie crust. Now you wanna be careful not to make this pie crust too thin because what'll happen is it'll split when it's baking. And it's okay if there's some splitting, that's totally fine because actually that's what happens to mine all the time. Um, the problem is, is that, and that usually just happens at the top, but if it's too thin, it can happen on the sides, on the bottom, and then you'll just have a big mess, you know, once you bake. When you roll that out, then you'll add about a three quarter full to one scoop. I use the ice cream scooper, so that's almost a quarter cup of um, filling for each turnover. But I rolled my dough out on a parchment paper, as you can see. And that's because this parchment paper helped me to fold the turnover to be able to form it and close it. And then what I do with the parchment paper is I kind of fold it into an envelope and tuck it because I actually put my pie crust or my turnovers into the freezer for 30 minutes. Like I do my pie crust for my mango pie. I put it in there for 30 minutes before I actually bake it. And I just use a simple pinching method at the end, at, at the edges. Um, I find that when I try to put a design on it, it actually thins the, the edges too much and it can cause burning. And you can actually see it on one of my um, turnovers. Um, it, cause, it can cause burning because the edges are too thin, but it can also cause a lot of breakage. So that's when you'll see some of the filling ooze out because of these little breaks in the dough. Um, so that's kind of my take on it. And then, We'll put it in the freezer. So once we have all of them, you know, t um, pinched up into little pockets, we want to, again, wrap them in the parchment paper that we have, put them in the freezer for 30 minutes, and then take it out of the freezer, heat our oven at 415 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll put it in there for 25 to 35 minutes. Now, at, the, at about the 15 or 20 minute mark, you'll wanna check your turnovers. If you start to see it get really dark, go ahead and grab some aluminum foil and create like a little tent on top to keep it from burning, the edges from burning too much. I mean, that's always gonna be your risk there. So the edges of the turnover are gonna to be too thin that they burn. They're not particularly palatable, so um, just be careful with that. The mango turnovers have rested overnight, so now we're gonna try it. Um, as you can see, they're quite big, um, but it's kind of hard to make a smaller one. Um, anyway, this spice crust is amazing, and I really hope you enjoy it. Now that minute tapioca really holds the flavors of the mango and the lemon in. I mean, it really soaks it up. So you're gonna be you're gonna be getting that flavor throughout the turnover. Let's try it. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Makes you want to wibble. Mm. That pie crust, like I said, it's buttery. Perfect amount of sweetness. Um, it's flaky. Oh, it's so good. 
with the mango, like I said, you can, like I said, with the tapioca, soaking up all those juices, you're getting it throughout the whole turnover. I could literally eat the whole thing in this one sitting. And I'm sure you could too. They're that good. You won't want to share them. So, I really hope you enjoyed this recipe and that you'll try it at home. If you did enjoy this recipe, you can find the link to the recipe in the description below. Today I'm making a mango crepe and I'm gonna be using the mango sorbet that I made um, and adding a few things like a mango compote on top um, and then homemade crepes. Um, it's really simple, like I said before, it's a very simple dish, um, very minimal ingredients, so you should have these in your pantry except for maybe the mango, which you'll get at the store or hopefully from your tree. Um, and then, you know, I'll show you how to assemble it and how to make the compote. So uh, as I always do, at least as I always try to do, is prepare my ingredients, um, measure out everything that I need. So, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to peel the mango. And then for one mango, we're going to chop that up into um, pieces. And then the other mango will slice thinly. Um, the chopped pieces will go into the compote, so you know we don't have to make that too um, uniform. But the sliced mango, we want to make them as uniform as possible, just for aesthetic purposes, um, so it just looks nice. To make the compote, I put half of the chopped um, mango into a blender and blended that into a puree. Once the mango is pureed, then I added the juice of half of a lemon, the lemon zest, cinnamon, a dash of salt. Um, however, remember when you're zesting a lemon, you zest lemon before you juice it. Um, and when you're gonna juice the lemon, make sure to roll out that lemon to release the, the juices from the pods that are holding it. And it also makes it easier to juice the lemon when it's been rolled out, it makes it softer. Um, and then add that to your blender and blend it again. And then you're going to add that puree to a saucepan um, and turn it on to a medium low heat and then add your vanilla and let that reduce. And then add your chunks of mango to the puree and allow it to reduce on medium low to low heat. Pay attention to this, we're not trying to caramelize we're just trying to reduce the amount of liquid in the mango. For this particular mango, um, there was, it had a almost flour um, taste to it, like there was uncooked flour in it. So for me, by reducing it, it helped to cook out that taste. So I added um, one tablespoon of sugar to the puree 
um, and blended that. But my recommendation to use, because I don't know how sweet your mango will be, is to allow the mango to reduce before adding the sugar, um, just to ensure that you're not over sweetening the compote. The compote is supposed to be sweet, but it's not supposed to be overly sweet. You can have the compote warm, but it does tend to melt the ice cream quite quickly. So I like to bring the compote to room temperature to add it on top of the ice cream or the whipped cream. Now to whip the cream or to make fresh whipped cream, um, it's it's really quite easy. I think you've I think many people have probably made it before. Um, I might have whipped it to just a little bit too much, but um, not enough that it became butter. But normally you want this kind of silky smooth whipped cream. As you can see, mine started to curdle a little bit, but, um, but it was still quite good. So. so let's assemble. We're going to put down some fresh mango in the crepe and then add some ice cream, some whipped cream, and then mango compote on top of that. Because it doesn't need to be, it's homemade, so it can be not perfect, um, but it will be good. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again, um, food doesn't need to be perfect looking or super pretty, but it definitely needs to taste good, at least in my book. So um, prettiness definitely helps, you know, you feast with your eyes as well. But um, the flavor of the food always makes up if something doesn't look so pretty. Okay, so it's all done. This is the mango crepe, triple mango crepe. So we have fresh mango, mango sorbet, and mango comp compote on a manhattatitas or coconut, young coconut crepe. So I made this all fresh. Um, and I have learned a lesson that when I get the shredded young coconut, I have to make sure to finely chop it because I ended up putting some big chunks in there and then I ended up having to have a pretty thick crepe. So even though it's still yummy, it's not as thin as I would have liked for crepe, but it's still, I'm sure, pretty good. Mm. Oh, that's good. Sinfully good. It's definitely mango overload. Okay, I shouldn't say mango overload, there's no such thing. But it's good, it has, you have the different, you have the cold, um, you have the cold sorbet, and you have the chunks of mango in there. And then the compote, the compote is a little bit soft, but I added some lemon and some cinnamon to it. Um, so it's actually really quite good. Um, oh, and some lemon, lemon zest, so you'll get that little, that tartness. Um, the mango that I'm using is not the champagne mango that I prefer. Um, but it's still pretty good. It's just the regular yellow or green mango that you can find at the supermarket pretty much year round. Mm. Ooh, that is good. I'm only supposed to have a couple bites, but I could eat this whole thing right now. Right. This is the last recipe of my mango series. So, I really hope you like this really long video. <laughs> but I hope you'd really try it. I mean, mangoes are pretty versatile fruit. You know, you can make it, you can make it, bake it, eat it fresh. You can have it savory. I'm sure there are more savory dishes I could probably come up with. But um, when I have mango, I prefer to have mango sweet. Um, unless it's pickled mango in Guam, we love to eat pickled mango and it's usually pretty spicy. And I enjoy that. I'll eat that 
all day as well. But, um, but yeah, so if I'm having a yellow mango or ripe mango, I want to have a sweet dish. And this is definitely one for the books. Today I'm making manja tatitas, or in more common terms, young coconut crepes. So my recommendation obviously is fresh is best, but if you can't get your hands on fresh young coconut, you can actually find it in the frozen section of your Asian food store. It's usually called young coconut or ugo. We're looking for young coconut, not grated coconut. It's a very, very different texture. The young coconut is a very tender meat, um, not the hard stuff that you find in, for instance, a coconut candy um, like Almond Joy or in a macaroon. Um, so that's not the same kind of coconut. We're looking for the soft, tender, young coconut. If you're using fresh coconut, um, keep the juice inside the coconut as well, but we're going to use that sparingly. If we're using young coconut from the Asian supermarket, let that defrost. Do not get rid of of the juices in the package. We're going to use that in the recipe. However, try to separate the juice and the meat from each other. So have I said this yet? I mean, this recipe really is easy to make. Even a chef in training can make it. My little sous chef here, he put this together all by himself. I helped him with the measurements, of course. In a large bowl, my little sous chef added the manha, or the young coconut, with the coconut water. Then he added the coconut milk and the sugar and mixed that all together really well. And lastly, he threw in the dry ingredients, the salt, the all-purpose flour, and the tapioca flour and mixed really well to a thicker consistency than pancake batter. Okay, making a dough or a batter, I don't know. And then we used four pieces of parchment paper to prepare the batter for cooking. Essentially, we're gonna put a scoop of the batter in the center of the parchment paper, and that's about a quarter cup. And you put it in the middle of the parchment paper, you put the second parchment paper on top, and then you roll it out until it's about a crepe thickness. And then you put this on the griddle or on a flat pan um, with the parchment paper still on, and cook it on each side for about a minute and then turn it over and cook it for another minute and just check it. You should be able to lift the parchment paper right off. If it doesn't lift off easily enough, it's not cooked through. So you'll need to flip it over one more time um, and cook it again on the other side. Um, but the parchment paper, once it's cooked, comes right off. In order to get the brown griddle marks, which really helps to create the flavor and caramelize the sugar in the manha tatitas. It'll take about another minute to two minutes on each side to acquire those brown spots or the griddle marks. Um, and that really is just gonna develop the flavor of the manha tatitas. Take them off the griddle um, and you can eat as hot as you want it. It really is a simple and quick treat. You can use it as a vessel to eat your ice, your ice cream or your sorbet. You know, add some toppings on it and some whipped cream and you really just have a gourmet, tropical dessert. And that's pretty much it. It's really easy to make manha tatitas. It's really enjoyable. It is a coconut crepe and something that we really enjoy here in the island. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. And if you want the recipe, you can find a link to my website in the description below. Enjoy. Mm. Half a day and hello. I'm Kelly. Mm. Okay. Um, stop with the um. 
Half a day and hello. My name is. <clears throat> Half a day and hello. That is always the hardest part. Hello, my name is Kelly Floss. The first thing we need to do. Oh, stop saying that. Okay, so first we're gonna. while it rises. With a tablespoon, it's next. Once I read, once you're, the second to the last step is baking this cream cheese filling. No, that's not, okay. An egg once, mm. and if Just you want and if you want this recipe, So originally, Ooh, full. So that's it. That is my full mango series with the bonus footage and the two extra recipes. I really hope you enjoyed this series and that you'll share it with your friends and family. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. Um, there's no cost to you. The subscribers allow me to you know, attract partners and affiliates so that I can continue to do what I do. So thank you so much for your support and I hope for your continued support. I hope that I, you can trust in me and that you can find me as a reference to your cooking um, and just a friendly face to make you feel more comfortable, you know, in the kitchen. So thank you again. Take care. Sidus Masi.